Hi, I'm George Hussey and welcome to my business, Automobile Atlanta, where since 1978, besides having a lot of fun, we've tried to provide the best in Porsche parts and service and vintage Porsche sales. We're going to do a tour of the shop now and I'll show you a little bit around. You can see my other videos showing some of the cars and maybe the new NOS attic upstairs, but today we're just going to generally show you around. We always have a lineup of vintage Porsches for sale. Not so much so the later ones because of as of this date we can't find any newer cars to sell because we're in the chip shortage where nobody's trading their Porsches in. So our front lot of the new cars is virtually empty except maybe one or two trade-ins. But yet in the vintage side, besides the customers' cars, we have a few of our own for sale here. Plus in the background you can see the car collection. We call that the finest 914 collection in the world and although we're under construction the cars still remain clean and safe in our dehumidified storage area. Some of these cars as you can see here are a little bit odd like down the row we have a some kind of a kit car the guy did that is very very odd but we actually bought that to get the engine out of it and then we have another one where we bought it to get the six cylinder engine it's uh, quite the hot rod that somebody has made in this white car so we do buy various cars like that for various purposes we're blessed because we can either sell the car or we can take it apart or we can use the parts to fix other cars and the value of a six conversion like in this white car and that yellow car down there are insurmountable when you want to restore a customer's car. A few like the burgundy one here, 76, was, came in here as a wreck and we're almost finished with it. So the customer cars up under the shelter are either waiting to be restored or some of them are ready to pick up like the six cylinder out here. And then a few oddballs like maybe we have a 993 with the engine out all the way down that we're rebuilding the engine and then we'll put it back in the car or there's a blue one down there that you may have seen in another video. It's the bent 914. We're waiting to get an appointment at the frame shop because these days everybody's hopelessly behind to where we can provide good customer service and get their car back in a reasonable amount of time. Behind the curtain here are very, very rare six cylinders. They're described in another video, but we keep six of the rarest right here. And then on the other side that I'm going to show you, we have the rare four cylinders. I guess James Dean dropped his speedster off of here because I see his 550 in the shop right now. So we've got both of his cars. Over here, you can see we're under construction for sure because we have to replace the back roof section. But these are where we keep the pretty rare four cylinders. Among them, the Motor Trend Import Car of the Year and the Mitsuda Bumblebee, black and yellow from their collection in Japan. So if you'll come in, I'll show you around now. Our building was originally constructed in 1947 on a hill. It was actually a porcelain manufacturing company and built like the modern Butler building but with ancient materials such as sticks and corrugated tin which I'll show you later. Hence when we redesigned this building we had to continue to build it on the hill. So you can see we'll have different levels that I'll show you as we go through. This is our customer waiting area. We have a few little colorful accessories and an area where we can sit and talk if you come to visit us and discuss your car or customers can wait if we have a quick oil change on a Cayman or something like that. Make sure when you come and see us you ask for your free complimentary Automobile Atlanta t-shirt. This is our front customer counter that was designed by my wife who has quite an eye for modern beautiful areas and it coordinates with the stairs that go down here actually right here used to be the original cement stairs and this used to be the front wall of the building I was always embarrassed back then if you have ever seen the history of Automobile Atlanta I moved here for the space it was giant but the building looked absolutely like hell and one day we had a call from some 914 enthusiasts from the Isle of Jersey coming here because they flew for free for Delta for their vacation and they came and I was so embarrassed to show them this building I sat them right here when this used to be a concrete stoop and had to talk with them about all the parts and the cars and enrich in them as to my knowledge because certainly 
the building was not impressive and they were very, very happy indeed to visit us and to see what we had going on because there's a lot inside but yet again I was so embarrassed and that prompted me to start redoing the building which I have been doing and been doing and right now we are in the process of the last roof section which I'll show you later which is actually right here so when we look down this way you'll see some of the old and some of the new this is the office of our social media guy Brandon who's doing a really great job and in fact is in filming this video right now this is our sales desk right here where we have a couple of salesmen, but not as many as we used to with the internet that came out. We used to have probably 10 salesmen here taking parts orders all the time, and now we're down to two or one, including myself. I like to talk to every single customer calls. I don't have the time a lot of times, and I'm hurried, so if you call me and I am talking very, very quickly, it's because I have four other calls waiting, and I want to give you plenty of time, but try to limit your talk with me to five minutes. Here we have some of our cars that have been celebrated in magazine articles or in shows. And this wood is actually from the original 1947 building. I think they call it Wormy Oak or something. So it gives a sort of a vintage touch to the building that we now are trying to make very modern. This is my office right here. I have some of the uh, vintage posters from Porsche. And like any office, you have pictures of your baby. So I have pictures of some of the cars that are dear to my heart. And my favorite Janis Joplin poster sitting her butt on top of a 356 Cabriolet, which was hers at the time that she glowingly painted. And my dad's original Buick Riviera that we bought new when I was 12 years old. He could never afford a Porsche. We had four children, so that was out of the question. But he dearly loved them, and that was part of my inspiration. This is our new parts department, and it's under construction. So if you can look and see the terrible state of the roof, I apologize ahead of time, but the parts are the parts, and they're well protected. Right here are the rows of the buckets that have accumulated here since Friday, waiting for some parts to be put in, and then the customer's order moved down and shipped. We're very, very blessed in that we have Porsche 12 miles from here to where we can courier parts over if you need them the same day. And we have three major importers that have built warehouses very, very close to us. In fact, one is just through the woods over there, maybe two football fields. We can walk over there, get your part, and send it out that day. So we get parts out quicker than anybody in the industry, no doubt about it. Sitting here happens to be, of all things, our new console project. This is a duplicate of the original factory console for the Porsche 914 appearance group that everybody highly desires. We have the console made dom domestically by Our Lady Sue. We have the absolute duplicate video factory console gauges made in India along with the so-called taco plate and sending unit. And then we have this heater lever, which is critically important when you're installing a console. Notice the 90 degree bend made in Michigan. We have the insert, the console insert, made in India as well. So together, and we have the wiring harness made in California by Jeff Bowlesby. So the combination of all of it means that you can easily put a factory look center console in your car and get the added instruments at a reasonable cost. We also had an oil pressure gauge made, just in case somebody wanted oil pressure, in the original size. All the other oil pressure gauges are much smaller, but this is one we had custom made to fit into the center console. What we try to stock here are the things that we can't get just around the corner that would delay your order. So you can see all the way down here, we probably have 600,000 part numbers here in duplicate or triplicate or quadruplicate and stocking things that we have to have made, that we have to buy quantity. For example, this emergency brake equalizer cable. We have this made because at, the, at Porsche, they're probably, oh, I'm guessing $150 or something just nuts. And we sell this one for $29.50 along with a pin to secure it to your emergency brake handle. Also, you have, probably have no idea what these are, but these are internal parts for the rear brake caliper. The rear brake calipers have always been troublesome, and they have a wealth of parts, but they're ingenious in that you can 
use the emergency brake portion of that rear caliper in a simple way to keep the car from rolling, but because of that it has specialized parts in it, and these are the adjusters for the pad, and they always seem to break the Allen out. So we had these made in both the large and the small size, along with the inner adjuster as well. We get down to minutia with some of these parts we make, and part of it is stimulated by the fact that we need them in our shop. We do many, many, many customer repairs, and it's more like a an R&D shop in that when we see that we need something, we have it made, and oftentimes I don't think that I can never make any money ever making these parts like the thousand uh, air guide plates that I made that'll still be here the day I die. Well, we saw a need for them. We had to get the quantity made, so we made them. This used to be our customer entertainment area, but we've made it more into a kitchen now for the employees since we do have the front end where we can sit and entertain. At one time, I had all of the big wigs from Porsche Reno sitting in this. There were 12 of them, and we were discussing moving from Reno to Atlanta and how practical it was since we had the big airport and we had Charleston right around the corner where they could bring the cars in. And after a bit of convincing and maybe a couple drinks, they all seemed to shake their head and say yes. And the next thing we know, they've moved here to Atlanta, which is a tremendous blessing to all of our customers and to us. And we have a very, very close working relationship with Porsche. I wanted to show you this. It looks like there's uh, debris on the table, but actually not. These are molds to make chocolate 914s. My wife bought these from Belgium, since she's from Belgium, a guy had them there, and she has been, for fun, making all kinds of chocolate 914s. It's better to bite into your 914 and break the chocolate one than wreck your car. So if you really have a, a problem with the hard restoration on your car and you get frustrated, bite into the chocolate 914. This is the showroom with the 914 six cylinders in it. It has all taken apart since we have had to break the tile to pour a footing for the new wall and therefore the cars are dirty. There's no decoration in here. None of our art is hanging. So what you see is pretty raw, but I can certainly go down this lineup of the six cars. The first one out there, the silver one, is the famous Peter Gregg 916 featured on the February 72 cover of Road and Track magazine with a caption, one of a kind for America. Bill Warner, famous for the Amelia Island Concourse, wrote the article and he's had great affection for that 916 ever since. If you've ever driven a 916, you'll find it superior to the 914 4s. That hard top welded on made all the difference in the world, the way the car handled and drove and how quiet it was. An exciting car, needless to say, and was going to be the supercar for 1972 that never came to fruition. And that's another story. The second one is a red third from the last six ever made. We call it the retro concept car in that we tried oh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, to update a 914 to modern 993 uh, standards, 9964, uh, that era back in there. So it's got a three liter in it and it has big heavy brakes and modern sway bars and suspension and some nice touches on the interior that make it a supercar. Incredibly fast, well handling and a really great, great car to drive. The light green one is actually probably the best six in the world. It only has 5,400 miles in it and it is totally original. A gentleman in England bought that from the original owner who had driven it once around America to put the 5,000 miles on it and made it a garage queen. It was so clean and perfect that it won the Benson and Hedges Concourse three different times in a row and he then got bored with it and traded it in to us and bought a cup car so that he could race it and it's been here ever since. 5,400 miles. The one next to it is a 70 with 5,100 miles but it had a hard life. It was sitting in a garage in New Jersey for years and everything and its mother fell on top of it and although it's clean and nice it's not in the condition that the 5,400 mile car is. The Signal Orange car is actually a Sportomatic. They only made four or so of those cars and they're a total bore to drive. Every time you touch the shifter, it shifts into neutral and the engine wheel revs, so you have to be very careful about holding your hand between shifts and no clutch and certainly no heel toe. 
So Porsche got smart and knew that they shouldn't make any more of these cars. And although we have quite a few Sportomatic parts in inventory that we'll never sell, we at least have an example of a car. We would never want to think about trying to duplicate the driver's original carpeting with one slot in it for only a brake pedal. That, that would never come to fruition. And finally, we have this tattered looking car here, which actually is the very, very last six cylinder ever produced. The cars were not produced by the number, but by the body number. And this is the very, very last body number that when they finally got around to putting a serial number on them, they would arbitrarily assign it. So 240, which this is, is the last, even though 260 was the last serial number. This car was never sold. It was owned by Volkswagen AG and it was their company racing car. Well, somehow it slipped out of the factory years later and a German guy bought it and had it for a while, then sold it to his German buddy in Boston where we saw it advertised in Auto Week and bought it from them. It somehow, like I said, slipped out of the factory and years later, I sent my German friend Ingo over to see the guy that sold it and knocked on the door and all he would get is a slam door in the face. The guy didn't want to talk about it, so there must have been something nefarious about it getting out of the factory and nobody wanted to know about it. This car we used at Road Atlanta in a lot of the Porsche Club drivers events and it is totally delightful to drive. It, you feel like you're driving a Cadillac around the track. I always use that expression. It's so easy and so fun to drive and has so much power and handles so well. But after the years, the car, although it looked good, we could tell that the car had been damaged before, it had been rusted before, and the body lines weren't as perfect as they should be. And as valuable as this car is, we decided that we were going to restore it. So we took the car apart, and we took it up to our body shop, and lo and behold, our man got backed up and he got backed up and he got backed up. My original plan was to have this car completely done, put all the decals and the stripes and the meatballs back on it, and for my young son's first day in high school, roar up and drop them off to make an impression because the car is spectacular in that blood orange color. Well, now he's graduated from college and the car still sits here in tatters. I had to bring it back from our shop because I didn't want to compromise the customer repair schedule and putting this car in front of those just wasn't right. So until we can get caught up up there, the car will sit here in tatters until we have the time to resurrect it once again. But a fabulous car. This is our customer service and accounting department. We have two ladies in here and one of them happens to be my wife, Mia who's from Belgium and is a fabulous accountant. She has really made this business for me. She is extremely efficient and if you ever need to get anything done or expedited, call and ask for Mia. She'd be more than happy to help you and make sure your order gets right out the door. Over here we have our four-cylinder collection. The far car is a limited edition, Phoenix red with white, they call it the creamsicle, that we have totally restored. It has won many, many, many prizes for the perfection of restoration. And we did this so long ago that we were able to find factory parts to restore the car. That's next to impossible these days. So when you're judging a restored car, you have to sort of uh, be a little bit lax on the critique because it won't have factory original parts. Well, that one does and everything is perfect and in its place and it is absolutely a joy to show. That was an Arizona car, so it was never rusted. In fact, in the battery area, which you people call the hell hole, I never want to associate hell with 914, so I won't say that. Instead of maybe a rat's nest, they're actually snake eggs. So truly an Arizona car, totally rust free that we restored. The black so-called bumblebee is probably the rarest one that has ever been made. That car came from the Matsuda collection in Japan. That was a special issue Japanese limited edition. If you can see the view, the car has no Porsche on the grill. And although it has side markers, the side markers blink when you turn the turn signal on. It has no retractable seat belts and you can't see it, but it actually has from the factory painted sunflower yellow Fuchs wheels, not mollies like all the other limited editions do. The one next to that 
if you didn't if we didn't know the history of it you would think that that's just a 71 clean little white 914 and that's what the serial number would say if you got a certificate of authenticity we happen to know that that is the motor trend import car of the year that came in to san francisco harbor on the barge on the article that was in motor trend magazine and eventually given away in a raffle at the new york auto show well a guy that is just a regular old guy won it and said well free car i guess i'll just drive it so he jumped in the car and he drove it 300,000 miles on his convenience store beef jerky route he'd sell these meat products to the stores and he was very successful because all the other guys would show up in trucks he'd show up into this 914 and they would think he was something special eventually he drove it and drove it and he did maintain it all right the valves after 300 and something thousand miles were burned out the car wouldn't get out of its own way so he threw it in his basement and he was quite the pack rat so debris and newspapers and who knows what were stacked and stacked and stacked and then the poor guy died and his widow called me and said, uh, George, do you want to buy Scott's car? And knowing now that these cars were more popular than ever, I said, well, sure, Mrs. Crump, I certainly do. And I went over there and she took me down to the basement and opened the door and some debris fell out. And I said, well, Mrs. Crump, where's the car? Well, it's in there. I said, well, I can't buy it until you dig that thing out. Six months later, she called me. They had dug out all of the debris and we brought the car to our shop and spent back then which was a lot we spent forty thousand dollars restoring a 71 914. the best thing was it was down here in georgia all of its life so there was absolutely no rust just covered with south georgia red clay up underneath and in reasonable shape so totally rebuilt shown motor trend did an article about it you can see it there and we are very very happy to have it even have the same script that we duplicated on the door Next to it is Red 76. That's the last car I'll ever sell. I love that car. That is the last year of the 914. They only made 70, 4,176 models, and that car's only got 16,000 original miles on it. Every time I look at that car, I shed a tear because that was the last of the 914s before they faded into history. And I am happy to have it, and I will keep it forever. I like the 76s because they have those bumpers that they modeled from the 916 believe it or not so they're a little more stable on the interstate and they have all of the latest body and chassis improvements although the engine suffered from pollution control the car is still an absolute joy to drive and to show and then finally we have a white 74 914 totally nondescript except 10,000 original miles only a doctor bought it for his wife who hated it and she parked her station wagon next to it and kept opening the station wagon door on it so it's got some chips on the left side that we leave in there on purpose just to show how people abuse poor 914s back then but it does have 10,000 original miles and it is breathtakingly perfect and original up under the hoods whenever we need to see what the factory did and how it looked back then we look at this car and finally the blank space if you can see that that's where we keep our ultima edition beetle the grandfather of the 914. We always have that in there to compare to see where these 914s came from and the heritage of the cars. If you can see behind the cars, of course, there's more of our construction all taken apart. But a year from now, the, this little showroom will be decorated and beautiful again, and the cars will be clean and nice, unlike they are today. And this is our shipping department where we very, very carefully pack your order. You can see two parts that we make, a taillight lens for the 914 and a driving light grill. And you can imagine if these pieces aren't very, very carefully packed in a big box, actually, they could easily break, especially with the shippers these days that are uh, really uh, barbarians when it comes to taking care of a package. Mike, our resident German, makes sure that each part before he sends it out is touched by him so you know you've got a genuine German touching your parts to christen them before they go out the door, even though, like this taillight lens, it's made in India, but if Mike touches it, then you've got the German touch to it before it goes out the door. And we're very efficient. We mainly ship post office and or FedEx. On special requests, we'll ship UPS, but we found that the post office is fairly efficient in getting 
parts out inexpensively and then FedEx does a pretty good job if we want to get them there quickly. You'll really begin to see the construction going on in our back area where we keep the used parts. We have dismantled over 1,100 914s and at least 800 924 44s over the years and stacked all of the parts categorized on the shelves here. Many we've had to throw out. In fact, we'll get a shot of our natural shed back there in a moment. We keep these parts in by actually a picture in the Porsche parts book. You can see these white pages here, pretty old. Each designates certain parts starting from the first page, which is the engine section, to the final page, which are actually the electrical section. And we have them all lined up one to eight, or actually one to ten, by the picture. So we can find any used part at any time, and they're pretty well organized and pretty carefully done. These days we're running out of some parts, and those are the parts usually we have made. But because we have them so carefully organized, we can get you a nut or a bolt that you may need. Whereas most companies would just send you a big part and they don't want to fool the nuts and the bolts. We are detailists. Every part for every Porsche, we want to make sure you get the smallest, tiniest nut or bolt. Even if I've got to go back and find it myself on the shelf or take it off of a, an engine. Being a tree hugger as I am, years ago I built a storage shed for our used parts here and I call it the natural shed. Actually built the shed around the trees there so they wouldn't be hurt and it's packed with used parts that we've taken off of cars years ago like the 500 doors and bumpers and deck lids and front hoods and suspension pieces. It's all back there. And although the back looks a little bit deserted, we have actually moved 145 dearly departed 914s, 924s, and 944s once we ran out of room here up to our body shop and they are all there resting in peace. And this is what has come into our shop since. You never know when one of these cars comes in what great part that we totally had run out of are on the cars. And we will never part a 914 unless they're pretty hopeless. So the ones you see here were pretty hopeless when they arrived. And we buy an occasional Boxster these days when they come. But we don't go out and seek to buy cars and strip them anymore. We're mainly now new parts. We've run out of room totally and we're here in the city and we just can't afford to do it. We had had our cars stored on the four acres we own up the street, but being now in the city, we don't want to have wrecked cars inside the city limits anymore. These are the stairs up to where we have our NOS parts, and there's another video about the tour of the upstairs, so we're not going to show that to you today. But the point is of the stairs is that we had our computer genius Jason back here, and we made him a really, really nice office, and the next thing we know he wants to work from home, and how can you say no when he does so much for us? So we dismantled his office and we put a set of stairs there so it could reach the upstairs. So what you see here is the remnants of a very, very nice used-to-be office and some beautiful stairs to go up there, run up there, and get your Porsche part that you need. Our eBay man, Jack, has done an absolutely beautiful job of going through every single part and categorizing them and listing them on eBay so that people know that we have many, many, many good used 911, 924, 944, and even 968 and 928 parts. He has all of these plastic bags with a specific part in that, so you know that if you buy a part on eBay, you're going to get that exact part that is pictured. And when we have duplicates, we will relist it as a duplicate. We keep some of our 914 engines back here also because the fact that we need the storage and there's plenty back here in our new addition. This was added on to the original building several years ago and it has really made a difference in being able to have the depth and the breadth of storage here. We now have over 16,500 square feet. Like I said earlier, we've stripped over 1,100 914s and we can't keep it all. We have thrown away thousands of 914 parts that we had a thousand duplicates of. We've saved some of the engines, but nobody ever wants to buy an engine. All they want to do these days is rebuild theirs. So we keep them here as a tribute to 914s of the past. And I can actually recognize some of these engines and remember years ago the car they came from. The dearly departed, the engine surviving.
So this is a combination of the, the new building and the old building, which I'll show you. We are under construction, like I've said several times before. This is the beginning of our new engine transmission rebuild room, which we call the clean room. Our mechanic is so meticulous about it, he doesn't even let me have the key to this. I'd like to be able to show it to you, but it's dark and it's locked. But if I look through, I can see some pretty clean things in there, for sure. You can see some of the original construction cement pylon and the timber going up and then the old roof line we're actually using this right now to support the old old wall until we're able to replace it uh, hector our construction engineer suggested that for fear of the two walls tilting that's how weak they were after all of these years so eventually this will all be replaced and this piece will finally be knocked down and we are going to put shop tile in here and take this down and we'll put the same boiler plate on the front of all of these shelves as we did in the front there in the new parts area and it should be pretty superb and clean so when you finally come to visit you'll see a much improved shop and a beautiful look. We have a couple tragedies here. The first one is a blue 73 914 2 liter. Everybody wants the 73 914 2 liter because it had all the equipment on it. Well, this one only has 50,000 original miles and original paint, although you can see some brush touch-ups done. I hate to ever compromise original paint. And we spent probably 200 hours taking this car apart, lovingly cleaning it and putting it back together since it had been out of commission for over 35 years in a garage. Got the car back together, totally original interior, totally original paint, engine ran like a champ, perfect compression, perfect leak down, took it to several car shows, and then after 250 miles tragedy, it developed a rod knock. And it developed a rod knock because of the fact the oil had turned to acid and it took a while for the bearing to finally deteriorate. And sure enough, now after all those hours, we're gonna have to pull this engine out, take it completely apart and rebuild it. Even though it still has perfect compression and perfect leak down. That's what you'd expect with a 50,000 mile engine. But just more work and now we will have so much time in this car that we sincerely hope the new owner will appreciate this whoever he may be out there because it is still a beautiful low mile 50,000 mile original owner car stay tuned this one which is filthy and it very it really very saddens me to see it is a 62 super 90 black plate california cabriolet that's never had anything done to it except maybe a paint job well when we had our 914s at porsche for the 50th reunion the showrooms were empty, so I thought that I would bring a couple cars from home, which I did. I have five 356s. I brought this one and a couple others and I had them on display. When it was time to move them, the other one started fine. This had a little bit of a problem starting, and we hit it with some starting fluid, which caught the air cleaner on fire. Not badly, but just enough to where people panicked. The kid ran and got a fire extinguisher that happened to have baking soda in it and sprayed the air cleaner, which pulled the damned baking soda down into the carb and into the intake. So we ended up having to take the engine apart to clean it all out and put it all back, back together. And now it has a little bit of a running problem because of some fuel clog or something that would just take maybe a day's worth of tinkering to fix and be fine again. But we don't have the time because of all the customer repairs. My point is we need four mechanics, so if you know anybody, we are hiring, no doubt about it, and we have a lot of fun here every day. Maybe if you're good, you could work on this car. We're very proud of our shop. We took the original building, and because we had to be working while the new building was being built, in fact, I did it, I designed a dissimilar roof line to span over the top of the old roof, which was centered here, and then go all the way back to the new section that we had built into the berm back there. So we have virtually uh, a cave type environment back there, which is great. It, it holds great temperature all year round and don't even need to have air back here, even on a 90 degree day. Or do we have to have much heat on a 30 degree day? It's amazing the way that works. Although we will add air conditioning next year when we finally get all of our construction done. You can see the floor covering. This is genuine German shop tile that we had installed, much better than painting, which goes bad right away. And this 
tile is so thick you can drop an engine block on it and it's not going to chip. We had four German guys put this tile in sometime last year and I made it a point for them to speak as loudly as they could whenever we had a phone call so all of our customers would hear that good German talk and who knows maybe they were cursing as well as they were cutting the tile to give it that flair of Germanity here while they were doing it in for our shop. It was a fun thing. But our shop with the new expanse here we have as you can see room for many Porsches to be worked on at the same time but with two mechanics and a service manager maybe these guys are getting a little lonely so we need you to apply for a job here because we have way too many customer cars that are in process and we'd love you to be here. There are, there are assorted Porsches here. We just did a video on this VW Beetle, the Altamont 2004, that's why it's here, but we have assorted cars such as uh, 944 Boxster, uh, 914, 911, uh, this monstrosity, uh, 944 that we are totally rebuilding for a, a customer. My point is we work on all Porsches equally and we love them all the same, but we don't work on anything other than Porsches. Can't believe I just said that. Uh, this is crazy. This is an actual Shelby Mustang and compared to Porsche fit and finish this car is absolutely barbaric. Well it would never be in our shop unless our service manager Albert who had a slew of Boss and 351 and whatever other Mustang they made of that late 70s era and knew how to work on them volunteered to work on this. Now the gentleman who owns this owns five or six Porsches that we regularly service and of course because there's a mechanic shortage the guy was desperate and Albert said I'll work on it so sure enough here we have a Shelby Mustang hogging one of our Porsche stalls. We probably have 20 or so Porsche 914's taken apart they're either at the body and paint shop or they're out waiting to go to the body and paint shop and because all of these 914 parts look the same and because we have so 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 many of them if we don't segregate the customers parts from the rest of the parts they're, they're all going to get lost because again they all look the same so we do put them all up here and as you can see we label it with the customers name so when the car comes back we can take the parts down and we know that those are our customers parts and we put our customers parts back on our customers cars it's important that we have every single tool to do any job on a Porsche and we don't mind buying the tools no expense spared so we have enough tools to do the latest 2020 Porsche or the old 914's all the body working and metal working and welding tools so we can do anything rest assured if your car comes here we're not going to be of lack of tools we just maybe have lack of mechanics so your car could be waylaid if it's not a quick oil change your car could be waylaid for a couple of months when you bring it in here for repairs. Finally I wanted to show you this car and tell you that I am preparing it for myself to drive. I love 914's but I dearly love them and I don't want them to ever get hurt so I'm almost afraid to drive one back and forth to work and then I don't want to drive a real special car because if it's crunched we lose a piece of Porsche history but I am going to drive this car. This is an actual 40,000 mile one owner 75 914 2 liter that is loaded front and rear any sway bars dual horns center console with gauges driving lights leather wheel actually foam leather wheel and in beautiful condition this sat for years and years and years until we finally resurrected it and we're almost finished we're doing the brakes now we've already gone through the engine and the clutch, it, not that it needed any engine work or clutch work, but just dolling it up a little bit. And the car is about the best driving 914 you could imagine. There's nothing better than a low mile 914 to drive. And I personally can instantly tell the difference between 150,000 mile and a 40,000 mile 914, no matter what has been done with it. We put new Michelin tires on this just because the original tires were flat spotted. Had to do nothing to the interior but clean it had to do nothing to the engine except service it and I'm going to have a lovely car to drive and what I like best silver metallics are always fragile and this paint is fragile as well and you can see the crazing on it and it's not in the best shape 
So it's the perfect driver. You don't need to worry about uh, a door nick or something being thrown up, but you've got a great driving car that I'll love using. Thanks for coming with me on our shop tour. And remember, we're always here for you, our 914 customer. And don't hesitate at any time to call for 914 advice or even Cayenne advice on the new cars because we're always here for that. Thank you. George Hussey, Automobile Atlanta.